Okay, finite math students, we're going to start into 4.6. And uh, what we're going to look at to begin with is what we call a matrix equation. And uh, this kind of goes like this. We're going to look at a matrix equation that has this form, AX equals B. Okay, and all of these things are matrices. Okay, this is more of a variable matrix. That's what we usually call that. And uh, this is usually the coefficients, and I'll talk about what this means in just a minute. Okay, that's a what we call a coefficient matrix, and then this is just what the equations are equal to. All right, that's how that goes. So uh, before we do this, we're going to look at solving a linear equation, but there's a difference. You can't divide matrices. There is no operation for dividing matrices. That's not something that's defined. But we can multiply matrices because we've learned how to do this. And if I say multi uh, matrix multiplication is not commutative, it means you just can't do it backwards. You're familiar with real numbers. It is commutative, like 2 times 3 is the same as 3 times 2 and so forth. So any time that you take any two real numbers and multiply them backwards, you still get the same answer. But it doesn't work on matrices. Matrices aren't necessarily commutative, and here's why. Um, the idea with this is, if you did this, see this right here is has two rows and it has three columns. This matrix here has three rows and it has two columns. So like we've learned, you can do that matrix multiplication and the result of that would end up being these outers so that would be a two by two so you would get a two by two matrix if you multiplied that now if you did it backwards look what would happen okay what i'm doing is i'm just doing this backwards so notice this again is three rows by two columns this now is uh, two rows by three columns well, you can multiply that because the inner terms are the same, but the result would be different, okay, because that would be a three by three matrix. So just by looking at that, you can tell that the answer to the matrix multiplications, if you do it backwards, is not necessarily going to be the same. It could be, it just depends on the situation, okay? So I'm not going to probably go through this too much. These are just basic properties of, of matrices. You don't have to know these things. Uh, probably the key thing to know is for this section is this these multiplication properties. And I'll be going over this as I teach these and everything. These things are mostly for you to refer to. And one of the key things we'll be looking at is if you take a matrix times the identity matrix. And remember, the identity matrix uh, would be like that. You have a, a diagonal of ones, everything else is a zero. And it depends on the size of the matrix. Uh, identity matrices have that type of structure to it. All right. So it's pretty important to, for what we're going to do to know this property, particularly. And then this property is going to be very important. If you multiply a matrix by its inverse, you get the identity matrix. Okay, and we'll kind of, you'll kind of see that as we go through examples and so forth. Okay, so I'm going to show you how you solve a matrix equation. And we're going to solve these linear equations doing the same thing just to kind of get you comfortable with the idea. So what you did, this is a matrix equation. Remember, A, X, and B, they're all matrices. They're not numbers, they're matrices. So what you do is you multiply on the left by the inverse of A. Okay, and it's important that you do that from the left. Okay, it doesn't work out if you do that from the right. So we do this. I'm just multiplying both sides of the matrix equation by A inverse. Okay, and then what happens, then we can kind of associate, or you do the associative property, we can put these together and do that. Okay, now this is what we know. The key thing is, when you multiply an inverse by its a matrix, you get the identity. So this part right here just turns into the identity, and then any time you multiply the identity times x, it just gives you the matrix x. So the result is this. 
So it turns out if you have a matrix equation, and what you'll need to know is uh, you just do the inverse of that coefficient matrix and then multiply it by this matrix B. But you have to do it in this order, and that's real important. Okay. So I think maybe what will help you understand what I just did is maybe just some basic equations, and I'm going to solve these in a way that's a little bit different than what you're typically used to. So this is a, a, a linear equation. Now you're used to dividing by 6. We're going to do this different. We're going to multiply by the inverse. The inverse of 6 is 1 sixth. So what I'm going to do is just like what you would do on a matrix equation, we would multiply from the left by the inverse. Okay, and this will help you, I think, understand what we're going to do with matrices. Well, what would happen is this would be 6 over 6 times x. Okay, this would be 12 over 6. So you just multiply that out. And that would be 1 times x, and that would be 2. Okay, well, see, this is the, the identity. You know, the identity for a real number is 1. The inverse of a number is a fraction. It's 1 over that number. So I've multiplied by the inverse from the left, just like you do up here. And then eventually, when I do the inverse, multiplicative inverse times the number, I get 1. And 1 is the identity. So you get x equals 2. Now, I'm trying to get you used to, used to doing these equations this way, just because it'll help you understand all this stuff up here better, I think. Okay. Yeah, the easy way to do this problem, obviously, is just go 6x equals 12, divide by 6. But remember, we don't have division of matrices. Okay, so we'll do this one the same way. We got negative 3 times x equals 15. Okay, the multiplicative inverse, what is the multiplicative inverse of any number? What it is, is it's just the reciprocal. Okay, so we do that. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 1 over negative 3. doesn't matter where the negative is. Then what I do is associative property. I put those two things together. So when I multiply those things, I get negative 3 over negative 3 times x. If I multiply this together, I get 15 over negative 3. This becomes 1. And then this becomes negative 5. Okay, now the key thing is is this is the identity. Anytime you multiply the identity times x, identity element, you get x. You know that 1 times anything is itself. All right, so that's what I'm trying to get you used to doing is solving equations this way just to get you used to uh, what we're going to do with matrix equations. Okay, now I'm going to do um, this one and then let you maybe try to do this one and see if you can do that. Okay, they're very similar. So this one we have 2 thirds times x is equal to 10. And I'm going to do something over at the side. The, the inverse of this is 1 over 2 thirds. However, that means 1 divided by 2 thirds. And we know when we divide fractions, you flip the second one and multiply like that. So you get 3 halves. So you can think of the multiplicative inverse just as multiplying by the reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply both sides from the left like that. Okay, and then here's what happens. Okay, this multiplies straight across, you get 6 over 6x. If you multiply this straight across, you can put the 10 over 1, you would get 30 over 2. 6 over 6 is 1. And then 30 divided by 2 is 15. And then 1 times x, the identity times x is itself. So that gives x equals 15. OK? So go ahead and try this one and just see if you can get this OK. Try to do the same thing that I did on C, just to make sure you're confident in what you're doing. OK, so you should have got 80. Uh, but one of the key things that I want you to kind of look at is make sure you did this right. The reciprocal of negative 1 fourth, just turn it upside down, you get 4 over negative 1. Now, again, it doesn't matter where the negative is. If you put your negative with the 4, it doesn't matter. Just the negative has to be there somewhere. So I multiply from the left, like this, OK? Multiply fractions straight across. So that's negative 4 over negative 4. And I probably should have wrote that there. 
I'll go ahead and do that. So that's negative 4 over negative 4x. And then this is negative 80 over negative 1. You can put that over 1. This becomes 1. Okay, this just becomes 80. And then again, the identity times x is itself, x equals 8. So that's what we're going to do when we do a matrix equation. We're going to multiply from the left by the inverse. And that's how we're going to solve the matrix equation. Okay, next thing we're going to do is real simple. We're going to write a matrix equation. So what we do is we do this. We kind of have a, x, a times x equals b. And the matrices are here. The matrix A is the coefficients. So what you do is you write that as the matrix 2, 3, 1, negative 4. And then you have a coefficient matrix, which is the variables x1 and x2. Okay. Then you have what it's equal to. You have the matrix 10, 4. Now, we're not going to solve this matrix equation. We're just going to write it, learn how to write this as a matrix equation. So again, this is what we call the coefficient matrix. This is the variable matrix, and that's what it's equal to. So you have A times X equals B. Okay, so that would be how you write that out then. Okay. All right, so let's do this one too. So this one we're going to write as... Coefficient matrix would be 1, 1. Those two variables have 1s in front. That would be negative 1, 0 0.5. Oops. Did that. So you'd have 1, 1, negative 1, 0 0.5. Okay, then times your variable matrix. And then that's equal to the matrix 1, negative 2. Okay, like that. All right, that's it. Okay, then let's do one more like this. Okay, again, we're going to write this kind of as A times X equals B. This is three equations and three unknowns, so the coefficient matrix would be 3, 2, negative 4. Then 1, you have a missing X2 term, so what do you do? Put a 0, then you have a 2. Missing X1, what do you do? 0. 4, uh, negative 1. God, something's wrong with this thing. Okay, so that last row would be 0, negative 1, 5. So those are your coefficients, 3, 2, negative 4, 1, 0, 2, 0. Whoops, I did. I messed up. That's why I was checking. Messed up bad. Okay, so that's 4, and then that's negative 1. All right. <laughs> That's driving me crazy. It keeps doing that. Okay, so that gives that. Then you do the, the variable matrix this time. We'll have three rows. So it'll be X1, X2, X3. Close that off, and then you're equal to this part. Uh, zero, negative one, and five like that. All right. So that's it. All right. So that's pretty simple to do. It's just learn how to put a system in a uh, in a uh, what we call a matrix equation. That's the way that has to look. Okay. So what I'm going to have you do is pause the video, do these problems, um, problems one through three. Just go to the bottom of the page. Once you're done at the bottom of the page, you can resume the video and see if you got it, everything right. Okay. Okay, so let's check to see if you got them right. The, the one thing about these equations is you may have got them right, but you want to make sure you wrote the steps exactly the way I did here. That's, that's pretty important. Um, you don't have to start redoing solving one-step equations this way. Again, the purpose of this is to help you understand how matrix equations work. So what I would like to you to have done was to multiply both sides by the inverse of 10, which is 1 tenth, and multiply from the left. Okay, when you multiply this out, that's 10 over 10 times x. This is negative 20 over 10, multiplying straight across. So that's 10 over 10x negative, equals negative 20 over 10. That becomes 1x. And we know the identity times x is itself. 
so you get negative 2. Try to think of the numbers kind of like you're going to think of matrices. Okay, this one, the inverse is the reciprocal, so you from the left, you should multiply by 6 fifths. Okay, when I do that, multiply straight across, that's 30 over 30x. You can put that over 1. Yeah, you could cross cancel if you wanted to, or just go straight across. 150 over 5, so that gives 1x is 30. And again, the identity times x is itself. That's what I want to see. And if you didn't write your step that way, go back and change it and write the steps that way. Okay. All right, these, these two straightforward coefficient matrix is 1, 1, 2, negative 3. Variable matrix is x1, x2, and it's got to be in that order. And then it's equal to 0, 12. Okay, this one goes like this. Coefficient matrix is 1, 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 0. And then the variable matrix is x1, x2, x3, and then it's equal to those there. Okay, and then the next one you're just doing backwards, and this goes like this. Okay, your equation would be 2x1 minus 1x1, 4x2 plus 0.5x2, like this, equals 10, equals 20. I do want to show you one thing on this. When you multiply these two matrices right here, here's how this works. Okay, so what you end up getting when you multiply this out is you would have 2 times x1 minus 1 times x2. That's the result of that multiplication. Then you go 4 times x1 and then plus 0 0.5 times x2. So we learned how to multiply matrices. So you're taking this row times this column, and then this row times that column, and see what you do is you end up getting that. All right, so it's a, it's a valid matrix multiplication. Okay, now we're going to try to put this all together. And I'll kind of show you how I want you to do this. So we're going to solve this system but we're going to use matrix equations, okay? We're not going to do uh, reduced row echelon form, Gaussian elimination, substitution. We're going to do a different method. So start by setting up your matrix equation. You'll have 1, 2, 1, 3 times the variable matrix, x1, x2, equals, and then 1 third, or, or 1, 3. Okay. When you do the matrix equation, now this is kind of what I want you to, to get to where you learn how to do. Like to go ahead and just write down the matrix equation again, like we just did. Okay, get that written down and leave a little gap here and just put the 1, 3 over at the side like that. So what we're going to do is we multiply both sides by the inverse of this. Now we're going to use our calculator to find the inverse. And not interested in you doing that by hand necessarily. So we're going to do the inverse of that matrix like that on, uh, on both sides. All right. And then I'll show you what we're going to do on the calculator. All right. So here's what happens. You need to know that when you multiply an inverse by its matrix, you get the identity matrix. You don't have to do this in your calculator because you know that'll be 1, 0, 0, 1. Okay, and it's a 2 by 2 multiplied by a 2 by 2, so you get a 2 by 2. And then you still get this. And then this part right here, just bring it down because we're going to put that in the calculator anyway in a minute. So that just comes down. Okay, and then the other thing we know is if we multiply the identity times this, what do we do? We just get the variable matrix. You don't have to verify that. You know that already. So ultimately what we're going to do is do this in our calculator. And we're going to put that totally in the calculator to solve the problem. Okay, so I'm going to get out my calculator and kind of show you what you would do with this then. All right, so I'm going to clear everything off, and I'm going to put these two matrices in my calculator. I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, um, put this in matrix A and this in matrix B. So I'm going to go uh, like this. 
So I'm going to go second matrix. Okay, I need to go to edit. I need to decide. I'm just going to put matrix A. All right, and I, that matrix A is a two by two. So I put in a two by two matrix. Okay, then I just put in the numbers one, two. This is like your coefficient matrix. One, three, like that. So that gets put in your in your calculator. Okay, I'm gonna slide that over the side for reference. Okay, then I'm gonna quit. Start all over again and then put this matrix in B. So I'll go second, get the matrix to come out, go to edit, go to matrix B. And this matrix right here has two rows and one column. So it's a two by one. All right, put the numbers in one, three. The second matrix is just what the equations are equal to. All right, so I got that. I'll slide that to the side for reference. Okay, then I go quit like this. All right, now what I do is in a clear screen, I do this. I go second matrix. I want to highlight A, so I press enter. Then I do the inverse button. That's going to calculate the inverse times for us. Then you can put times or you can leave times out. Then you go second matrix and then you go matrix B. And then this is ultimately what you want to put in your calculator, see? Okay. All right, so we got that. And we get my calculator to come back up here. Okay, press enter. And see, that'll give the answer. All right, so it's the answer is negative 3, 2. All right, so what we, what we end up getting then is we've got the answer of the problem is when we put this in the calculator, we end up getting x1, x2 equals negative 3, 2. So that means the answer of the problem is the point negative 3, 2, all right? Then we can check, and we check like this, okay? Just plug in to your system of equations. So the first equation is x1 plus 2x2 equals 1. Plug in. X1 is negative 3. X2 is 2. Crunch out the details. That's negative 3 plus 4. That's equal to 1. So it checked. Check the second equation. X1 plus 3X2 equals 3. Again, plug in negative 3 for X1. Plug in 2 for X2. And work out the details. So you end up getting negative 3 plus 6. That's equal to 3, so it's right. So you can tell you're right on the problem fairly easily. Okay, so I'm just putting these um, keystrokes on the calculator here for reference. So again, what I did is I put in matrix A, matrix B, and then on a clear screen, I basically just did A inverse times B, and you have to do it in that order. That's real important. And once you get the answer, you can check your answer. Okay. All right, so let's do one more here. Okay, I don't need that now. Okay, so this one will set up the matrix equation. So that's going to be negative 2, 4, 6, negative 12, and then negative 5, 15. Okay, what, 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 teacher? Coefficient matrix. So we got x1, x2, that's equal to negative 5 times 15. Okay, and again, we're going to solve like this. I'm going to go through the steps of solving. So you want to just rewrite the matrix equation that we have. Leave a little gap over here. And you're going to multiply from the left. You're going to multiply by the inverse of that coefficient matrix. So it's negative 2, 4, 6, negative 12, inverse. Same thing here, negative 2, 4, 6, negative 12, inverse, like that. 
And you want to know that this is the identity. You don't have to punch that out. You already know that when you multiply the inverse of a matrix by the matrix itself, you get the identity matrix. So you get that. Okay, just bring down the right side. And then we'll go to the calculator and put this in. The other thing I want you to know is if you do this, don't do this on your calculator. It's just that is itself. If you multiply the identity by a matrix, you get the matrix itself. That's an analogous to multiplying a number by one and getting itself. Okay, then we're ready to go to the calculator and put this in. Okay, we can just type over what we had from the last problem, too. Okay, so what I have is this thing. So I go second uh, matrix. I'm going to edit matrix A. So I've already got that matrix set up. It's a two by two. And let's just put in these numbers right here. Put in the coefficient matrix. So put in negative two, uh, four, six, negative 12. Go like that. Now you want to quit, go to a clear screen. Go back to matrix, so second matrix, whoops, not that. Okay, go down to, go to edit. Go to B, press enter, and put in the other matrix, which is negative five, negative five. And 15, okay. Oh, I think I missed that second one. Trying to use the touch screens. Doesn't work very good sometimes. Okay, so I got my two matrices in. Then on a clear screen, you go like this. You go second, matrix, matrix A, inverse. You do the inverse of the coefficient matrix times matrix B. So just highlight B, do that. That's the key is you want that. And this one says we have a singular matrix, so it means this system of equations doesn't have a solution to it. Or, or hold on, let me rephrase that. It might have a solution to it, but this method doesn't work. Okay, and I'll, I'll explain why that is here in just a second. So yeah, you'll get a you'll get a singular matrix on this. So what happens is doesn't work. This method fails. All right, now it doesn't mean that we can't solve this system of equations because we can solve it maybe with other things. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to Gauss-Jordan and try that. So let's do this. We're going to do a, a, a augmented matrix like we've already learned how to do. And we're going to now put that in the calculator. All right, and let's see what happens. And I'll explain why that's a singular matrix here in just a minute. It's easy to show that. All right, so I'm going to clear this off. And then we're going to just put this in a brand new matrix. So I'm going to go uh, second matrix. And let's edit. Let's put this one in C. It's a different size. Okay, this has two rows and three columns. So we set this up as a two by three like that, and then we just put in the numbers. So we got negative two, four, negative five for the first row. Then we have six, negative 12, and 15. All right, so then we've got an augmented matrix in. And then remember the way we do this. Once you got that matrix put in, uh, wherever you want it to be put in, then you just go clear screen, get everything cleared off, and then you go second matrix, and then you want to go to math. 
and then go down to where it says reduced row echelon form. So we do that. Then we got to put matrix C in. So we go back to matrix, highlight C, press enter. Okay, so ultimately what we're going to do is that. Okay, then we do this and let's see what happens. All right, so here's what happens in the problem. Now I'm going to write down what we get and we'll kind of use this to review uh, what happens in this situation then. All right, so what we have, whoops. Let me slide that over there. Set it up so it doesn't disappear on me. Up, oh, up, oh, up. Oh. Okay, so let's write down what we have, and then we'll finish up the the problem here. So what we have is we have 1, negative 2, 2.5, 0, 0, 0. Okay, now what does that row of zeros mean? Now that means infinite solutions. Okay, so we, what we have is we have a system of equations that has infinite solutions. Now the way we learned how to do this is like this. Okay, this first row... What it really says is it says x1 minus 2x2 equals 2.5. So what you're going to do is you're going to let either variable, I'm going to let x2 be t. Then what you would get is x1 minus 2t equals 2.5. Solve for x1. So you get x1 equals 2t plus 2.5. So actually the solution of this system that's what x1 is, that's what x2 is, all right? And you could write the answer to this as a point. You could write 2t plus 2.5 comma t, all right? And that's the way I'd prefer you to write that answer. All right, so let me kind of review what I did on that, because this will happen sometimes. And then I want to talk a little bit about um, why this thing was a singular matrix anyway. That's kind of worth going over a little bit here. And let me move this over here. All right, let's go over kind of what happened on this problem one more time and try to clarify that for you. Okay, so, you know, we put everything in. The key thing is, when we put this in our calculator, this thing turned out to be a singular matrix. Now, the reason it's singular, it just means this does not have an inverse. Not all matrices have an inverse, and we certainly talked about that. So if you look at this matrix right here, the reason it's singular is because this times this is equal to this times this. Okay, so... That means that the inverse does not exist. That doesn't mean that the, the system of equations has no solution. It means you got to go to a different method. So what I chose to do is just go to augmented matrix. So I put in the matrix. The augmented matrix did the reduced row echelon form. Since I got a row of zeros, that tells me, like we've learned, that it has infinite solutions. But don't stop there. Go ahead and parameterize it. So what you would want to do is uh, let x2 be t, plug it in, and then solve for x1, like we've learned how to do. Okay, so it's kind of good to know when you have a singular matrix. If you have a 2 by 2, just do this. It's real easy on 2 by 2 to tell if it's singular, and you don't have to waste time on that. You could have just said, okay, I can't do the problem that way anyway. All right, okay, so I think that'll wrap up what I wanted to do on this part of the video, I think I'm going to go ahead and let you do two things here. I'm going to move this up here, and I'm going to do one more illustration here. Let me pause the video here for a second so you don't have to watch me. Okay, so I think you got everything fixed here. So let's go ahead and I'm going to do one more, then let you try to see if you can do a problem or two that way. Okay, so this one, this is another thing that can happen. We're going to set up the matrix equation. So we have 2, 4, 2, 4. That right there tells me something, and I hope it tells you something too. 
uh, let's see, that'd be X1, X2, and that's equal to 612. Now, what's going to happen on this, if you look at this matrix right here, if you go 2 times 4, and then go this way, 4 times 2, they're equal, so that means you have a singular matrix. All right, so, so we don't need to go to our calculator. If you did this, you would do this. You can't even do a matrix equation on there. You can't do. So it's important that you learn how to recognize that when that shows up then. So what we have to do is we have to just take a different method. So let's go to augmented matrix. Let's go 2, 4, 6, and then 2, 4, 12. All right, let's put that in the calculator and roll with it that way. See, I saved a little bit of time by recognizing just mentally that that's a singular matrix. So we're going to go um, second matrix. Uh, let's edit in C because I already have a two by three there. All right, and let's just put the numbers in. So we have two, four, six, and in the second row, we have 2, 4, 12. And the fact that those numbers 2 and 4 are the same tells me something. I don't know if it tells you anything or not, but it, I, I would like, like you to be able to spot something on the problem. All right, so anyway, what I have is I have that put in. All right, now what I'm going to do is just go quit, clear screen, back to matrix, go to math, and then do reduced row echelon form. I get. And then matrix C. All right, do that. And then press enter to get the result. Okay, and then we should remember what this means, hopefully. So what we got is this. Let's just write down the result. When we did the RREF, what we got was we got 1, 2, 0, 0, 0, 1. All right, let me ask you, what does that mean? If I end up with this, what does that tell you? That tells you no solution, good. Okay, so there's no solution as the result of that then. All right, and that really is because what this is saying is it's saying 0x1 plus 0x2 equals 1, so it's telling you 0 is 1, which is impossible. Okay, so that's how you would do that then. All right, we want to learn different techniques of how to solve things in different ways. Reduced echelon form is a little simpler to do in a matrix equation, but we want to show you a dip, an alternative method to doing that. Sometimes matrix equations are a good way to do the problem. All right, so that's what we have there. So what I'll have you do is uh, just pause the video, if you will. Um, and then go ahead and I'm going to have you work a problem out. These two problems here. Uh, so go ahead and do this problem one and then on the next page problem two. All right. If you have a singular matrix, you can just do it with reduced row echelon form of an augmented matrix. So pause and see if you do these okay.
Damn, this drives me crazy. Okay, so we can now kind of see how we did here. Um, so this would be your matrix equation. Solve the matrix equation. Right, now what you end up doing is you end up putting this in your calculator. You do the inverse of the coefficient matrix times the matrix 213. If you do that, you would have got negative 716. So totally on your calculator. Check. It's always good to check. Plug your answer into both equations. See if it works. Okay. Now what happens on this one? Now you you do the matrix equation, and you'll find that you'll get a singular matrix. So this thing right here is singular. It's kind of hard on three by three. There's no real quick, simple calculation you can do on that to to tell. So basically what would happen is you just go to the augmented matrix. So I went ahead and put in the 3 by 4 augmented matrix. And when I did the reduced row echelon form, I ended up getting this answer. Okay, so anytime you have a singular matrix, just try a, a, an augmented matrix and see if that gets you to where you want to go to. Okay, so pause and get things fixed if you need to. Otherwise, I'm going to... Finish up with this last problem. I think the last problem will be a word problem. Okay, I have this number 64 in a second video, so I'm going to finish up this video here. All right.